function f of s is expressed in the frequency domain as 10 divided by s times s plus 1 times s plus 10. We are looking for the temporal response of f of t and the final value of f of t, that is the value of f of t when time tends to infinity. We have two ways to find the final value of this function. The first one is to first find the inverse Laplace of f of s and then take the limit of that function when t tends to infinity. The second way would be to use the final value theorem, which does not require f of t, that can be found through f of s, which is much faster. We know that the final value of f of t, f of t is the limit of f of t, the inverse transform of f of s, when time tends to infinity. This is equivalent to, according to the final value theorem, the limit of s times f of s when s now tends to zero. Of course, going with this would be a lot simpler and faster than finding the inverse Laplace and then taking the limit of f of t when t tends to infinity which we can do later. This is going to be equal to the limit of s tending to zero of s times this s comes from the theorem times the function that we have 10 over s, s plus one times s plus 10. This s cancels the denominator. limit of s tending to 0 of 10 over s plus 1 times s plus 10. When s is 0, we end up with 10 over 10. The final value of this function equals to 1. Now let's do the same, but let's use the temporal response of f of t. To that, we first need to find f of t, and as you look at that function, we will not find that function in the table of the Laplace transform. We will have to split that function into things that you can find in the Laplace transform table, and that will require to decompose that into smaller fractions. Uh, the will require a partial fraction decomposition of f of s. And to that, we have two ways to do it. Let's cover both. This expression can be also written in the form of f of s equals to a over s plus b over s plus 1 plus c over s plus 10. And this is the partial fraction decomposition of f of s. Our job now is to find a, b, and c. And you can see that this smaller fractions can all be found in a table of Laplace transform. The first method is to find directly one of these components at a time. And let's start with A. If you're interested in finding A, you take the original expression We multiply that by the denominator of a, that is s, and you make s equal to what makes the denominator 0, which in this case is 0, s equals to 0. s cancels s. When s equals to 0, a gives us 1. For b, same approach, 10 over s, s plus 1, s plus 10. We multiply that by the denominator of b, that is s plus 1. And we set everything to negative 1, which is s to negative 1, which is the value of s that makes the denominator of b 0. 
this will give us these two can terms cancel out. We'll give 10 over 9 times negative 1, negative 10 over 9. And finally, for C, we have 10 over S, S plus 1, S plus 10, multiplied by S plus 10, and setting S to negative 10, which is what makes the denominator of C0. Canceling these two out. We have 10 divided by negative 10, that is negative 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 9 equals to 1 over 9. That is the value of C. The second way to find the coefficients a, b, and c is to find a common denominator for this expression, multiply all the coefficients by the common denominator, and then equate that to f of s, and then solve a system of three equations to find a, b, and c. The common denominator for this expression is simply the multiplication of them. If we now divide the first term, the denominator by the denominator of the first term here, we are left with s plus 1 times s plus 10, and multiply that by the numerator, we have a s plus 1 s plus 10. Same for b, the, the denominator divided by s plus 1 is s times s plus 10 multiplied by b. And for C, we have S, S plus 1. And this equals to F of S. This is equal to 10 over S, S plus 1, S plus 10. We notice now that the denominators here are the same. They cancel out. And you can expand what is left in this equation. If we expand the first term, we'll get a s squared plus 11s plus 10. The second term is bs squared plus 10bs. And the last term is cs squared plus cs and this equals to 10. Now we can factor all different powers of s here on the right the left side and equate their coefficients with the coefficients that we find on the left on the right side. Let's just start with s squared. What is multiplying s squared? We have a b and c. So if you factor out s squared, we have a plus b plus c all multiplied by s squared and that is equal to zero because there is nothing on this side that multiplies s squared. Again the a, b and c, the sum here a, b and c is multiplied by s squared equals to 0, so if you move it to the right, 0 divided by s squared is 0. Doing the same for s, coefficients of s are 10a, sorry, 11a, 11a, plus 10b, plus c. And this equals to what multiplies s on this side, again 0. Finally, coefficients of s to the power of 0, 10a times s to the power of 0, we only have 10a, and the s of 0 here multiplies 10, so equals to 10. From the last expression, we get the value of a, 
a equals to 1. Now we are left with a system of two equations to solve for b and c. From the first expression, we have b plus c equals to negative a, which is negative 1. And from the second expression, we get 10b plus c equals to negative 11a. a is negative is 1. Is the result here is negative 11. If you multiply the first expression by negative 1, and add the two expressions, we have negative b plus 10b, that is 9b, negative c plus c equals to 0, and plus 1 minus 11 is negative 10, which gives b as negative 10 over 9. Now, replacing b in any of these equations can now solve for c. If you use the second expression, c equals to negative 11 minus 10b, c equals to negative 11 plus 100 over 9, c equals to negative 99 plus 100 over 9, which is 1 over 9, same result that he had before. Now that we have the coefficients a, b, and c, we can replace them in the original formulation and finally solve for the inverse Laplace of f of s. The result here is very simple. We, we have two forms of expressions that can be found in any table of the Laplace transforms. The inverse of 1 over s is simply 1. The inverse of 1 over s plus 1 is exponential of minus t, or t times 1, of course, times the coefficient, negative 10 over 9. And the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 10 is the exponential of negative 10t. And this is our expression for f of t. If you now do the limit of f of t when t tends to infinity, what is the result? This term tends to 0, this term will tend to 0, the final value is 1, which is exactly what we found in the beginning using the final value theorem. If you plot this function, time and f of t, when t equals to 0, this simplifies to 1 minus 10 over 9 plus 1 over 9, that is 0. And when t is tending to infinity, the function tends to 1. And it goes up following these two exponential curves. So the final value of our function can be seen here as time tends to infinity the function tends to 1.